Good evening, everyone. I think I've got it on. Can y'all hear me? No. Oh, okay. We may have a... There we go. Uh, good evening. We're going to go ahead and get started. I've got 631, so we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. And we will turn it over to our... Miss Pennington, there you are. Okay. You need this? That works out. <laughs> First, I would like to, uh, to invite our students to come up and help lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'm going to ask Drake and Jordan and Noah, Keaton, Claire, and Jocelyn to come up, please. just like to welcome everyone here tonight so glad you could join us and I just must before we get started um, send a shout out to Dr. Todd Chandler and to the East Jackson High School Chorus I was blessed enough to get to hear them yesterday last afternoon yes uh, at 325 yesterday afternoon at the National Cathedral in Washington DC and they made us extremely proud. They also performed at Mount Vernon on Thursday and then at the Catholic Church of Washington, D.C. on Saturday. And um, so I'd just like to say how proud we are of them and they did a great job. And, and thanks to the administration and all of the uh, folks there at East Jackson High School, those parents that worked so hard to get everything together, it was it was a wonderful opportunity, so y'all would have been very proud of them. All right, um, at this time, I hope everybody's had a chance to look at our minutes from our last meeting. Uh, do I have a motion that we would accept our minutes? So moved. Okay, and a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, all righty. All right, and the approval of the agenda. Do we have any correct no. changes or? No changes. Okay, then we need an approval of our agenda tonight. Do I have a motion? So I mean, moved. okay, and a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, very good. Okay, we'll turn it over to you, Dr. Howard. All right. Thank you very much. I want to second uh, Ms. Wheeler's congratulations and thank you to the parents. We, I, I was fortunate enough to see a short video clip Ms. Palmer sent me yesterday and brought a tear to your eye to know that those mm -hmm. kids are having that kind of an experience and they made East Jackson and an entire Jackson County very proud. So, congratulations and thank you. Um, we are excited to be here at East Jackson Elementary, and those of you who are not familiar with our board meetings, we have the privilege of visiting our schools throughout the year, and when we're at each of our schools, uh, we get a highlight from each of our schools. So we're going to start out tonight with hearing from Miss Pennington and her team, and she's going to share with us some of the outstanding highlights of East Jackson Elementary School. And thank you, Miss Pennington, for hosting us. We always know that there's setup and there's organization, and we appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you to the board and to the community for coming out and supporting us tonight. Um, they keep telling me that as the, a first-year principal that everything that's happening to me is not hazing, but having the first board meeting after the fall break, <laughs> I really do think that they're trying to play jokes on me. But anyway, we are ready, and I'm super excited to present uh, some of the things that makes East Jackson special. This year we've done a lot with student advocacy as a county and at East Jackson, of course, student advocacy is definitely at the forefront of our minds. We make sure to advocate for our students in many, many ways. 
Tonight we wanted to highlight what we feel like makes East Jackson special and the way we advocate for students in other ways besides the academic day. Of course, we do great things academically and we're very proud of those and we're happy to talk about them anytime you want us to. But we wanted to highlight some other things that we do for our students. So tonight we're gonna highlight um, how we advocate for our students um, to explore, explore other talents. So we have a variety of clubs that we offer after school for our students and we have a great participation in that program. So in just a minute, I'm gonna have Casey Rogers come up and talk about our clubs program and then she's got some students that are going to talk a little bit about their experience in those clubs. After Ms. Rogers speaks, we're gonna have um, Ms. Wendy Dillow come up and speak to you about how we reach, reach out into our community to get help and support in our building. And she's gonna talk to you about our Watchdogs program. It's a huge, successful program here at East Jackson. We're very proud to have all the dads in the building. So she's gonna speak to that. And then we also have a watchdog here, Mr. Earl Williams, to speak to you about how that impacts him and the students. And then to close us off tonight, we're going to highlight our Eagle Aids, our parent volunteers, and how they help make East Jackson a special place for our students. So Ms. Jamie Bouchard, who is the president of the Eagle Aids this year, she's going to speak on uh, their behalf. So at this time, I'm going to uh, welcome Ms. Casey Rogers to the front. Hey guys, thanks for um, coming to visit us tonight. We always love to have guests at East Jackson. Um, I'm Casey Rogers. I work with our gifted program and our STEM program. Um, and I do a lot of things um, enrichment based at our school as well. And so helping coordinate clubs is one of the things um, that I'm really excited that I get to do. Um, I'm really passionate about offering enrichment opportunities for our students and it's great to work with the staff. We have a lot of people um, who believe that as well. We offer 16 different clubs to our students. They're all led by staff members, some teachers, some parents pros um, and they all do this voluntarily after school hours and um, we think it's important to get kids involved in clubs not only to help them kind of develop their interests and things that they're passionate about but we also think it's a great way to kind of have a pathway to graduation because if you think about you know in high school sometimes kids might not be really into school but they might really be into their football team or their drama club show or something like that that they get to do so elementary school is the perfect time to kind of explore some of those things and help them dis discover what um, what it is that they're excited about um, we have just as far as coordinating our clubs we have like a master um, Google Doc that we do all of our attendance and everything for our clubs in one document so we can kind of track who's where um, and it helps us keep up with enrollment too so we have 258 students I think that's right out of how many do we have now out of about 500 students that are involved in our after school clubs so we have great participation um, in those areas too so I'll tell you just a general overview of what some of our clubs are and then I'm gonna let the kids tell you something that they like about being in clubs too um, we offer clubs that kind of promote le leadership and citizenship so we have a student leadership team um, there are three different branches of our student leadership team one group of them are what we call teacher helpers and they go they're all fourth and fifth grade students and they go to the um, lower grades classes in the mornings and help the kids get ready for their day. Um, then we have one group for our safety patrol. They help at car duty every morning and put our flags up and things like that. Um, and we have another group of those students who are um, big buddies is what we call them. It's a peer mentoring program that one of our students actually started two years ago as part of his Difference Makers Fair project. And so they're paired up with younger grade students and it could be help with academic or social needs. Um, it's a great opportunity for them to kind of develop their leadership skills too. Um, and then we also have an ambassadors program with our student leadership. We have a KIND club and KIND is an acronym that stands for um, kids, oh gosh I forgot now, kids inspiring nice deeds and so they do things to help promote kindness in our school um, and then of course Jackson County 4-H offers a lot of leadership and citizenship opportunities for our students too um, we offer several clubs that are related to science and technology and our, with our STEM program we have an Aggies club which is um, an agricultural club for our students we offer a coding club and robotics team um, we have Eagle Explorers which is a kind of a junior STEM club for second and third grade students we have a Lego Learners Club to kind of help get our students to start thinking about problem solving through Lego-based curriculum. And then we have a morning news program called East Jackson Action News. And so our students are part of the filming and the production for the morning news program every day and with Ms. Vickers who puts that together for us. And then we have arts-based clubs. So we have art club, we have a crafty kids club, we have a drama club and chorus. Oh, and I forgot on our STEM club, we have a science Olympiad team. Um, as well and then we have a group of clubs that are promote health and fitness so we have a nutrition advisory council club that's sponsored by our cafeteria manager and they meet and help plan recipes and have give feedback to what the nutrition program um, what's going on with the nutrition program at school 
and we have a volleyball club and it's been so popular that they now have a JV volleyball club for younger kids um, and we have a fit club as well too so I'll let these guys introduce themselves we've got somebody our clubs are offered um, first through fifth grade and so we have up from second grade through fifth all the way here today so y'all just tell them your name and what grade you're in and what you like about the clubs that you're involved in and you don't have to tell all your clubs yeah you're first <laughs> if you don't want to use the microphone, just be loud. Y'all are loud. That's fine. You just uh, <laughs> Hello, my name is Keaton Schultz, and I'm in third grade. And I've, I've been in three clubs this year, um, and that is drama club, crafty kids, and volleyball, JV volleyball. But what I decided to talk about with y'all is that I decided to do volleyball. I liked, I wanted to do volleyball because I was on a team once, but then I moved to, to volleyball and it was just helping me practice to actually get on a better team and to like prepare me and I think volleyball helps you bond with your friends and it can help you like be confident and that's why I picked volleyball. Do you want to start that one? Hi, my name is Jocelyn Collins. I am in fifth grade and I also decided to do volleyball because I am going into the, um, I am trying out for the All-Stars and I really need to practice if I try to, and I have to try to um, be really good so I can have a longer season and longer practices so I can be better and hopefully I can be um, one of the Georgia Volleyball Girls. Yeah, good goal. <laughs> Hi, my name is Claire Hawks and I chose our club because um, I love art and, um, it's just like my favorite thing to do when I go home. I love art club because we get to do fun stuff. For an example, we get to craft. I feel like art is my passion and and I feel like everyone in the school should go to art club because it is just amazing and I love it so much. And that's why I love art club. Awesome. <laughs> Hello, my name is Drake Hill. I'm in fifth grade and I decided to be in the Aggies. I've always liked to be outside and I used to have a little garden in my yard, but now we've started one at school and most of the food and some of the fruit that we um, eat at school comes from that garden, which I think is kind of cool because I knew where it came from. That's perfect. <laughs> um, my name is Noah Banks. I'm in fourth grade, and I like I like fit club because we don't just um, exercise; we do it in a fun way. So, like, we don't just get a number of push-ups that we have to do there's always some activity. Like, um, we play running games. We don't just like run back and forth. And that's why I chose to go. You had another one too, didn't you? Yes. Hi, my name is Jordan Williams and I'm in fourth grade um, here at East Jackson. Um, I have been involved in several different after school clubs, including Lego Club, Nat, Eagles Explorers, Drama Club, and Science Olympiad. Last year in uh, Drama Club, our production was Susuko Jr. and I was Gertrude. This year is Frozen Jr. and I'm excited about it. I like Drama Club because it allows me to express myself in music and performing. Um, I want to thank the school and all the teacher, teachers who dedicated their time to the after school programs to allow us to grow. Thank you for allowing me to talk about the after school clubs offered here at East Jackson. Thank you.
Good evening. I'm Wendy Dillo, and this year I am coordinating the Watchdogs program. I do have someone that's helping me, Ms. Renee Kiley. She's going to help me with um, contacting the dads to make sure that they're coming in and that we've got their t-shirts ready and um, welcoming them when they come in the day that they've signed up. But Watchdogs is a program that is um, dads of great students. It is nationwide and it provides a positive male role model for our students within this building. It also um, allows us to have an extra set of eyes and ears to enhance security and reducing bullying. So um, how do we get our dads to come in? Well, the first thing we do is we offer a dinner and we feed them. So um, this year we were fortunate enough to have um, a way to say thank you that our watchdogs rock and we had some rocks that we were able to paint. Um, the dads and grandpas and uncles, they were able to sit down with their children that came in, decorate the rocks, uh, listen to a great speaker and enjoy some pizza and then they could sign up for a day to spend in our building. When the dads sign up, they're dedicating that one day throughout the school year. Um, when they come into the building, they are able to spend time with their child in their classroom to see, hey, you know, what, what's the day look like for my child? Then we also schedule them to see the next grade level so that they kind of see what's going on the next year. They can play games with students, work with flashcards. Um, I think maybe their favorite thing to do is lunchroom duty. Um, I think that's it. But they also help at um, car riders and bus riders. So um, we had about 325 dads, uncles, and children that had RSVP to come to the dinner. And um, we have almost, almost every day from now until May signed up for dads. The t-shirts will be here by the end of the week. We're ready to go and we're ready for them to come on in. Um, I'd like to introduce Mr. Williams if he could come on up. He's um, been a watchdog in the past and he's going to be a watchdog again this year. Uh, so he's going to share what it means to be a watchdog. I thought I came here to talk about guy <laughs> Um My name's Earl Williams. Uh, I like the watchdog program for one because I get to come in and be with the kids and uh, the watchdog just doesn't stop here. I go to parties with all the kids in the class. My daughter is invited to a lot of classes, so the watchdog goes along with that. You can hear the kids talking about, that's the watchdog that's in my class. That's the watchdog that came in the class. But the reason why I do it and I like it is I get to be here and walk through the school, be out on the playground with the kids and enter interact with the kids and they feel comfortable I feel comfortable you know you just you just got to follow the rules there's some rules in the watchdog activities that you can do and the things that you can't do you know so but uh, I'm really blessed to be able to come out here I didn't have that when I was a kid at school and I really appreciate the teachers and whoever came with the watchdog program which actually means uh, dads of great students if nobody knew that acronym, but it's a, it's a very good acronym. But uh, I thank you for, um, I had a little speech here, but uh, it's uh, the, the, the watchdog program. And then I meet a lot of dads. The dads, uh, we get together, we talk. Um, when I'm gonna be here, when you're gonna show up, and then you out there with the car riders, and you out there with the, the buses. So I really, really, really enjoy being a watchdog. So if, if and it's not just for the dads, it's uh, grandfathers and uncles, please come and uh, be part of East Jackson Elementary School. And I really thank you for having me. I love watchdog, thank you. <laughs> We love having Mr. Williams and all of our watchdogs. They're extremely dedicated to that program. And like you, like Ms. Dilla said, we are almost full. Our motto is a dad a day until May. And so we're almost there. So we're hoping to meet that goal soon. All right, Ms. Bouchard. I'm Jamie Bouchard, and I have the pleasure of representing our Eagle Aids tonight. 
Um, we are really a PTSO is what we are, but we call ourselves Eagle Aids. We um, have a, pride ourselves on really a community environment. We try to get as many parents involved as we can. Um, so we're Eagle Aids rather than a traditional PTSO, but truly it is an example of a parent-teacher-student collaboration, what we do. Um, we meet on the second Tuesday of every month, and we have working moms. Most of our, our, um, our Eagle Aids is made up of working moms. We have some stay-at-home moms. This year we have a couple of dads who've come and helped, so we would love to have you come sometime if you want to volunteer with Eagle Aid. <laughs> We have some of our watchdogs be a part of that as well. Um, but our biggest projects that we do throughout the year is, is fundraising. Um, we, we do a couple of smaller fundraisers, but our biggest fundraiser is the fun run. So a few years back, a couple moms just sat and watched uh, the booster sign, taking 50% of the profits that we raise right out the door with them. So they agreed to take it on in-house so that 100% of the profits could stay here in our school. Um, that's been, I think, four years ago that we started that. Those moms have now graduated on to middle school and high school with their students. So we are left with some huge shoes to fill, uh, and it's been a learning experience for me in particular this year. I've always been a part of Eagle Aids, but I had no idea just how much work this whole fun run thing was. It has been wildly successful, though, in the past, um, them doing this rather than having a company like Boosterthon come in because we do get to keep all of our profits. So not only from a, from a fundraising standpoint is it successful, but it's also just, I know the teachers and staff in this room would agree with me and the students. We have so much fun with this. It builds such a community um, atmosphere and it really brings the parents, the teachers, and the students together. So a couple years ago, um, I think we started out raising maybe $20,000 the first year and then went on from there. Last year, we raised over $40,000 for our school and then this year we set a goal of 30,000 because we are 100 students less because of the rezoning. Um, today is day five of nine in collecting our pledges and we are actually at $25,000 roughly today, which is super exciting. So, yeah. so we still have a little ways to go. So if anybody in this room wants to donate, you can let some of these children in the back know before you leave tonight. Um, but it is, it is a really good time. Our teachers get super involved, the parents get super involved, and it, it's, a, it's a, a lot of fun for everybody. Um, we have really great sports here on our, on our faculty and staff at East Jackson. They have been pied in the face. They have, um, have been dumped in dunk tanks. They have um, been slimed. I think last year was slime. And this year, if you ever have a free moment, you might want to ask to see a video of the dance-off competition that they all had at our pep rally a couple weeks ago because um, they were getting down, and I, I was shocked by some of the teachers' <laughs> moves uh, that they had. So if you ever get a minute to look at that video, it really was awesome. But all of that builds um, relationships between the teachers and the students and the parents. It's fun for the kids to be able to see that side of their teachers rather than just the all business serious side and it just builds a really neat bond between them. Um, so as I mentioned all of our funds do stay right here in the school. A couple of things that we have um, been able to fund over the last couple years is our school is one-to-one -one with um, the Chromebooks. So all of our students have Chromebooks individually which is pretty cool and then we also did a huge playground renovation a couple years ago and then right now we're working towards building an outdoor learning classroom that was our project from last year but we quickly learned that it was a lot more expensive than we thought it was going to be once we got the plans done so so we have a ways to go with that but we're coupling the funds from last year and this year together um, to be able to do our outdoor learning classroom our students go out to the community. They don't just ask family and friends for donations. They're going into businesses. We've had tremendous uh, local business support this year, more than we've ever seen. So that's been really neat to see as well. But it's fun for us as parents, and I know for the staff too, for the children to get to see the fruits of their labor as these things are, are happening. And they get to see the playground renovation and all that. And they're all so excited about the outdoor learning classroom. So that's just a little bit about what we do. That's the main thing is, is our fundraising. Um, and I can't say enough about how welcome parents are in this building. I know you would speak to me on that too with the, the, the watchdog. It's, you know, you walk in and you feel such support and when you create that environment between the parent and the teacher, that trickles down to our students as well. So, so we're thankful for East Jackson, for sure. So just a glimpse into some of the things that make us special.
special and why we love working with our community and our parents, it, it really does help because we all are on the same team and that makes coming to work every day a whole lot easier for those of us who are here and, and trying to get the work done. So we appreciate your support and we were glad to be able to share with you tonight. I, I'd just like to say I got to be here uh, for the fun run and it was very exciting. It all the hot. teachers, <laughs> all the teachers and the administrators, they start the running themselves first and they really did run, you know, so it was quite impressive. The kids had a good time. It was very hot. But y'all made sure that everybody had plenty of water, so it was a, it was an exciting time. My, both my grandchildren had a good time, and I will have to say that y'all are very welcoming, also, because I was here for Grandparents Day, and there was a nine, bunch of grandparents. Nine hundred people that day. Nine hundred and, and about five were, were students, right? Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah. So there was it. It was it was. I came early, and I struggled to find a parking space. So. Yes. They've got great support here. We appreciate y'all. Thank you. We enjoyed this. Thank you, East Jackson. We are so proud of the performance here and proud of the culture and appreciate everyone who shared and especially our parents who are willing to come and be a part of it. That makes it super special. So each, each month, uh, we are very honored to recognize some Rotary students and the Jefferson Rotary recognizes um, one student per month and these students are selected, you'll hear in just a minute, why these students were selected, um, but we recognize them. And we have two from East Jackson, so I'm gonna ask Ms. Palmer if she could come forward. Uh, the uh, winner from September was not available, but is here tonight. So I will let Ms. Palmer do the uh, honors of recognizing both September and October's outstanding Rotary students, and they will introduce their teachers as well. Okay, Bradley Aiken, would you join me? Bradley was unable to be with us in September because he is our Beta Club president and they were having their uh, Beta Club initiation that evening so he was busy initiating new members. Um, Bradley is the son of Robert and Sandy Aiken who were with us tonight. The courses that he is taking this school year include Dual Enrollment American Literature through the University of North Georgia, Honors Human Anatomy, AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Economics, AP Calculus, and Allied Healthcare and Medicine, which is the third course in that pathway. I don't know if you noticed when I was calling those out, but there's not a single elective course in that list. This young man, who is a senior, and you know, many of his colleagues are taking the easy way out their senior year, he is loaded up on academics. Um, in addition to that, he is um, involved in our sports programs. He is on the varsity football team as well as the varsity track and field team. As I've already mentioned, he is the president of our beta club. He is on the leadership team of uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, or FCA. He is a member of the Healthcare Occupation Students of America, or HOSA club. And he's also part of National English Honor Society. So again, athletics, CTAE, academics, the entire package there. Um, some of his honors and awards include the UGA Certificate of Merit. He is a two-time academic letterman. He won the Biotechnology Award. He, is, he participated in, and I don't know why anyone would want to do this, but he, he does a really good job and enjoys public speaking. So he was a part of the American Legion oratorical competition. He was the winner for Post 56 and the winner at the district level and the area runner up. And again, he does a fabulous job. In fact, he should be doing this tonight instead of me. Um, he is a College Board AP Scholar Award winner, and he was also the Kiwana Student of the Month. I don't know how he has any time to do community service, but he has a nice long list of these things as well. He's been on mission trips through his church to Logan, West Virginia, to St. Louis, Missouri, to Puerto Rico, and to Virginia. He uh, is very active in the I Serve Food Ministry, which is a part of our Beta Club's outreach. Um, Street Love Homeless Ministry, Bentley Assisted Living Volunteer, um, a student speaker at Jackson County teacher, New Teacher Orientation this summer, um, a part of the Piedmont Athens Regional Physical Therapy Volunteer Program, and he interned this summer at R Peptide Lab Solutions, and that was a job that he kind of earned through his work with Miss Emily Gunderson in his biotechnology class, and he worked with, I know, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's proteins. Okay, so he did that this summer when lots of other kids are chilling out, he was working. 
Um, he has chosen Miss Emily Gunderson as his most influential teacher. And Emily's unable to be with us tonight due to some surgery that she had recently. But I'm going to um, have Bradley tell you a little bit about her and why he chose her, as well as what his plans for the future are. Thank you, Ms. Palmer. Um, so I chose Ms. Gunderson because she's taught me all four years of high, uh, three out of four years of high school. And she really instilled a love of science in me my first year as a student here. And she was so welcoming. And she's always been there for me. She's one of those teachers I know I can go to and talk about problems. And she'll always be there. And after high school, I plan to go to either Georgia Tech or UGA and major in biochemistry. And I also have the pleasure of introducing our October student of the month. So would Grace Palmer and her teacher, Mr. Andy Briscoe, join me at the front. And so Grace is the daughter of Jason and Chanda Palmer. Jason, you just sit right there. And, <laughs> and her courses for this year include dual enrollment American literature through the University of North Georgia, as well as dual enrollment macroeconomics and dual enrollment political science. And she is also taking AP chemistry. She is involved for the fourth year in our mastery uh, course. She is in the fourth year of modern dance. And this year she was able to add an elective. Um, she's a part of our yearbook staff, digital design, and you are the copy editor. Did I get that? Final copy editor. Um, so I think she's using her literacy skills there on that with the yearbook. Um, her activities include being a member of the Jackson County Student Advisory Board that meets with Dr. Howard. She is the historian for FCA. Again, she's on your, your book. She's a part of Beta Club. She is the alto section leader for our chorus group. She was on the literary team. She participated in TRIO. And she's also a part of National English Honor Society. Um, as far as athletics goes, she is a member of our dance team, our dance dazzlers. And they actually competed this past year in the first ever GHSA dance competition and placed second in state. Um, for the first time, so they'll be competing again this year. Um, for her honors and awards, she is a Georgia Certificate of Merit recipient. Um, with our chorus group, she's one of many students who has been blessed to train under Dr. Todd Chandler, and they, she has been part of the groups that have performed in Orlando, Florida, at Carnegie Hall in New York, um, in Pearl Harbor at, on the USS Missouri in Oahu, Hawaii, and then most recently, two days ago, at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, and then last night at the National Cathedral. And I'll add, thank you, Ms. Willard, for those kind words. Uh, we found out today that based on some of their Facebook postings, they've received invitations today to go back and perform at Carnegie Hall and to perform at Salt Lake, in Salt Lake City with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. So. Wow. Yeah, I, we don't know that they'll get to go because that's a lot of fundraising, but they, they have received those invitations based on um, their work over the weekend, so we're very proud of them. And we're very blessed as a family to have been able to, to benefit from, from Dr. Chandler's hard work. And um, she's been Bible Club Student of the Month, um, Core Student of the Month, literary team plays second in the region competition. She's a two-time academic letterman, a two-time dance letterman, and a two-time chorus letterman. She does participate in some community service, such as Operation Christmas Child through our church, um, Relay, Re Relay for Life through Veda Club. She serves at the Wild Game Dinner through Maysville Baptist Church. She's a tutor for some students at East Jackson High School and um, has been involved in the Crouch 5K run. And she has chosen as her most influential teacher, Mr. Andy Briscoe. And Grace is going to tell you a little bit about that and about her plans for after high school. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is Mr. Briscoe. I chose him as my most influential teacher for Rotary. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I chose him. Number one, he's really funny. I don't know if you've ever met him, but he's super funny. Um, number two, we both share a deep love for Christmas. I'm not kidding. We listen to Christmas music about every day in his class. It's wonderful. Um, but most importantly, I think it's because he cares a lot for his students. Um, he invites people to come speak to us about colleges and encourage us to, to take AP classes and really encourages us to want to go to college. Um, and for me, it's because he 
he has helped me become a good math student. Um, math is not my strong suit. I hate math with a passion. I hate it. Um, I'm definitely more of like an English history person. I get that from both my parents, but because of Mr. Briscoe, I have been able to succeed in math and I can, can continue to succeed in math and uh, that's something I've always wanted to do and because of him, I've been able to do that. Um, so thank you, Mr. Briscoe. Uh, as far as plans go for college, I plan on attending UGA and I hope to major in political science. So thank you. Congratulations to both of those outstanding students. We are certainly very, very proud of you. And I'd like to call Mr. Wester to the podium at this time, who will introduce the student of the month for Jackson County Conference of High School. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here tonight and uh, su super impressed with uh, Mr. Aiken and Ms. Palmer. That's uh, awesome. East Jackson has got some wonderful students. And we're super proud at Jackson County High School to introduce our student of the month for the Rotary. And this is Mr. Aiden Jarreau. And Aiden is a senior at Jackson County High School. Um, he is the son of Brandy and Chris Jarreau. And the, the third one coming through Jackson County. And they've all made it so far. So we're, we're excited for that. Um, he is, this year, as a senior taking College Readiness Math, AP Macro, and AP Government. He's taking uh, a Writer's Workshop class, as well as uh, Forensic Science and Honors Human Anatomy. It's a pretty full load. Doing a good job to finish up strong here at Jackson County. His most influential teacher is Mr. Graham Oakley, and we'll allow him to introduce Mr. Oakley in just a few minutes. And he had Mr. Oakley for Honors Physics, I believe, uh, last year. And so that was a course he took last year, and, and Mr. Oakley will have a chance to be recognized in just a moment. Aiden's pretty involved at our school, um, as you might imagine. He is a member of the Jackson County Wrestling Team and has gotten two letters uh, of uh, achievement with the wrestling team, including a sixth place finish last year in the 182 weight class in the state. We're very excited for that, and he's excited for his senior year. Uh, he was invited to participate in the Super 32 uh, wrestling tournament that took place, which is a national tournament, took place just this past weekend and competed well and represented our community as a wrestler there, and we're super excited for him to continue this year in that endeavor. Uh, he is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as our beta club at Jackson County High School. And he volunteers at the South Hall Food Pantry, and also with the Georgia Special Olympics. He's done a great job with that. He is a two-time football letter winner, as well as his letters in wrestling. He was the 2019 top scholar for wrestling. He was also in the top 10% of his class. He is a two-time academic letter winner. He's a scholar athlete award winner in both wrestling and football, and he is a College Board AP scholar. That's not too bad. <laughs> We're proud of you, buddy. Uh, he plans to attend Augusta University next year and major in nursing. He'd like to pursue a graduate degree and become a nurse practitioner. We're very proud of Aiden, and this time we'd like him to introduce his most influential teacher, Mr. Oakley. Thank you. Um, I chose Mr. Oakley as my most influential teacher because, uh, well, I only had him for one year, but in that one year, he really helped me develop a love for physics. <laughs> and uh, it's just, just the way he teaches it, uh, it's just, sorry, I don't really know how to describe it. It's just, <laughs> uh, he just makes it fun to learn the entire curriculum and just, you have fun throughout his entire class. and. He's just there joking, along, joking with you the entire time. And just overall, Mr. Oakley just provided a big impact on me by just making science fun overall. That's, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Howard. Thank you, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm thrilled tonight to recognize two more uh, Excellence in Service 
award winners. The first is Miss Ashley Childress from Maysville Elementary. So Miss Childress, if you'll come on up. Miss Childress teaches fifth grade at Maysville and she was nominated by a parent. And this is what uh, Miss Christina Garish had to say about Miss Childress. She said, I nominate Miss Childress because she has gone above and beyond, not just for my family, but for my son, Nakoma. He went from an F student who got into fights to a straight A student who values school and has more confidence in himself because of her. She showed him how to believe in himself and in others. Thank you, Miss Childress, for giving us our son back. Next recipient is Miss Jan Lee from South Jackson Elementary School. Miss Lee is a special education teacher at South Jackson, and she was also nominated by a parent, but who chose to remain anonymous. So here's what this parent had to say about Miss Lee. Miss Lee was a huge asset to our family last year. My daughter suffers from extreme anxiety and depression and this has impacted her academic performance. Ms. Lee has invested not only time with my daughter and her academics, but more importantly, confidence and love. She was the perfect amount of tough love and support my daughter needed. Jan was a huge blessing to our family last school year, helping her thrive and achieve new academic heights we were unsure she would ever reach. This was only possible because of Jan's persistence and dedication to my daughter. I can only imagine what she has done for other kids that have crossed her path. I know she has made an impact on my family, which we are forever grateful for. Even though my daughter isn't a student at SJS anymore, she still continues to reach out to our family to check in on my daughter. That is a heart of gold. Congratulations, Ms. Lee. special teachers and I tell you um, we always say the most important thing that we do for our students is make sure that the story they tell when they get home is the one that you would want them to tell about their experience at school so you clearly have had an impact as well as the other teachers recognized here for Rotary students so thank you very much and congratulations very deserving. Uh, Mr. Farmer if you could come forward and uh, recognize we have uh, periodically we do a transportation recognition and uh, for those of you who take advantage of our transportation service that's an important part of the work and the important part of a student's day believe it or not it's the first person they see and the last person they see so we, we value our transportation department for you thank you dr howard thank you boyd it's always a privilege to uh recognize our department and outstanding individuals in our department and tonight is no exception uh, mr doug Ayers, if you'll go ahead and come forward mr Ayers has been with us for 25 years so that right there shows you his level of dedication and love that he has, not only for our, our county, for our transportation department, but for our students. And Doug, I just wanna say, I, I appreciate you in, in so many different ways. He also serves as a custodian at East Jackson Middle School. So he plays kind of a, a dual role there. He makes sure they get there and then he takes care of once they get there and then delivers them back home safely in the afternoon. So greatly appreciate that. I will say the first time that I met Mr. Ayers, and he's always been this way, he's just a, a real person. Uh, his personality is one to where he's always upbeat, he's very calm, uh, very considerate, and very respectful. It's always, yes sir, Mr. Farmer, how you doing? How are things going? And I see that pass on uh, with his, his children also that are on his bus. Uh, he, he's like a second father to him in the way that he takes care of them. And uh, from watching his videos and, and coming to visit him, uh, sometimes without him even knowing it, uh, it, it's amazing to see that true character. And I just want to say on, on behalf of the Transportation Department, I greatly appreciate you, sir. Uh, Dr. Howard is right. Our drivers are the first people that set the tone in the morning, and they can also set the tone in the afternoon. And just a good morning. Sometimes that's all that child may hear. Uh, that, that encourages them and, and you know just to see these teachers 
and to see the, the watchdog program, watch dads, watch dogs. I mean, it's, it's amazing to me uh, in Jackson County how many things that we have that we offer, not only from one department, but across the board for our county that goes on here. And I'm proud to be a part of that. I'm very proud of you, Mr. Ayers. Appreciate your service. We got about 15 or 20 more years to go together. So just make sure that that's an understatement. Otherwise, we, we just gonna have to keep this little token of our appreciation. But sir, I appreciate you. I admire you, and thank you so much. Thank you. Right, thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Ayers. I, I just want to say as well, you know, about last year we were doing a major renovation project at West Jackson Middle School. He probably doesn't even want me to say this, but we were down to the last couple of hours trying to get everything ready and we did an all call for any available folks and Mr. Ayers one of the folks he's never worked at West Middle but he was willing to step up and be a part of the team and came over and um, he's just a, a fine person we're honored to be to work alongside you thank you very much all right that's all the recognitions that we have at this time we do have one other item that we're going to discuss if anybody needs to make an exit because of commitments this would be a great time to do that otherwise and and please know that you're free to go at any time you need to but um, the last item on the agenda um, board members is the discussion of guaranteed maximum price for the new high school project and there is an attachment there for your review and what I would like to say is and I just close that out how about that is we have we've worked um, really hard and I want to commend Mr. Uh, Mr. Gilbert and Mr. Patton and, um, and our friend Joe back there who worked Mr. Donegan who have worked diligently and we've been working with um, our construction firm uh, and so what you will see is a, basically an overview of the process that we've taken and as you know we've changed uh, construction management firms uh, through this project which means that there is a couple of as you know contracts that are separated uh, that you will see there but you will see the guaranteed maximum price that, that Carol Daniel has offered for us for your review and we are not going to ask you to vote on this tonight but what we would like to make you aware of is that the, uh, hopefully all the information that you would like to read over is there um, we were pleased with this process we worked very diligently to look at some value engineering opportunities this is um, right where we pretty much expected to land and so we're grateful for for this process and would like for you to take some time to read over this and if you have any questions about the the actual final project project price then that you would please let us know and come visit with us. But as you can see there, the actual construction price is broken down. Mr. Gilbert has, and his team have done an outstanding job. The actual construction um, from, from Carol Daniel is right at 46 million with a, the subtotal there. And you can see those on page two, how it's broken out. So uh, the total package uh, there is 68, which is, uh, which is very, very much where we uh, expect it to be. And you can see um, the reductions that we, we were able to, to build in as well. So. Um, that's there for your review. We would ask that the board uh, consider this. And the construction is continuing because we, we are already working, as you know, with Benco, who's the steel provider, as well as uh, our Simpson, our grading firm. But the sooner we can have this approved in the next few days would be, a, would be very appreciated so that we can turn them loose and have them managing the entire site. So um, I would ask that you all review this and let us know if you have questions in the next day or two and maybe set a time this week that we could um, have this be an action item. All right, well, uh, hearing that, then we can just maybe tonight before we leave, we can all come up with a time that we can get together so that we can uh, move forward with this. Um, and so let me encourage you too to reach out if you have any questions. I have to just say, I know most people have gone. If you can't, if you can't be proud after coming to one of these board meetings, then there's something wrong with you. <laughs> we have just been, we are so blessed in Jackson County Schools to have the excellent educators that we have and students and parents. And so this is, this is just like, you know, my cup runneth over when we get to come and hear all these wonderful awards and recognize so many folks that are doing such an outstanding job for us. So. I just want to say thank you to everybody, and that certainly includes the central office. I don't mean to leave any of you guys out <laughs> in, you know, all you educators and that have a part in everything. Okay, um, well, I think we're going to use our consent agenda then mm -hmm. with items one through six, unless someone has a question about anything. Are you all ready to vote?
Okay, glad you could be with us, Mr. Clarence. See, I, I missed seeing you come in. Okay, all right, do I have a motion that we uh, approve items one through six? So moved. Okay, and a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, very good. Okay, well, we are finished with our part, so I have a motion that we adjourn. So moved. Okay, thank you all for coming, and all you folks that were in Washington, D.C., go home and rest good tonight. <laughs>